Good morning, everybody. Good morning. That's the energy that I wanted this morning. How's everybody feeling today? Yeah. Yeah. Word up. Word up. So check this out. My name is Anthony Singleton. Some of you guys have seen me. Some of you guys haven't. But the one thing that I'm not going to do right now is I'm not going to disrespect you. So listen up. I don't expect you to disrespect me. Young lady, you might be one of the statistics. Stand up for me right there in the, in the long hair. Right there. Stand up. You're looking at me. Yes. Not me. You. You might be one of the statistics out here that's going to happen. You're not listening to nothing. I'm talking. Teachers are talking. People are trying to help you. And you feel like you know more than us. Now, let me get this right. I'm a little bit older, and you're in the sixth grade. So, I don't think you're smarter than me, and I don't think you have more wisdom and knowledge than me. So this might be something important for you to listen to. I know you guys have got a lot of things going on. It's the last week of school, but I thought it was important. I thought that you guys, I thought that you guys were important enough to talk to before you go home. Man, let me just let me just be honest. If I can change or move or impress upon one of you to change out of 380, I think I did a good job. I would love to change 380 minds, but I know logically that's not going to happen because some people won't let me talk to them. Some people will listen, but they won't hear you. So decision. A decision is a conclusion or resolution reached after consideration. What do they mean by that? The action or process of deciding something or of resolving a question. Decision. The information was used as the basis for decision of formal judgment. So, the information that I give you in here today, what I speak to you about, you'll be able to take that information and you'll be able to say, Mr. Singleton, Mr. Singleton talking some bullshit or he's talking some real. That's what you're going to say today. You got the decision to make. Sorry if, I, if, I, if, I, if I, my words sound harsh, but I'm straight talking. Because guess what? Your lives are on the line if you make the wrong decision. Let's go to the next slide, please. Social emotional learning. We all are dealing, we all are dealing with this. Adults, children, we all are dealing with this. But this environment, school is supposed to be a safe environment. Did you see what happened in Wildey, Texas? That was supposed to be a safe environment. A kid who just got out of school made the wrong decision that cost other children their lives. Other people, human beings. And I don't really think you guys in the sixth grade understand how precious your lives are. I ain't trying to sound corny or nothing like that today. Because that's not how I speak. I just kind of speak it real. Y'all see me in the hall. You see when I come to your classroom. You see when I check you. I might check you hard, but you know when I finish checking you, it's a bunch of love involved in that. That's why I'm here this morning. L-O-V-E. As corny as it sounds, it's as real as it is. Next slide, please. So, I just want to give you a little bit of background about me. I think I kind of you, I want to be able to use me to motivate you. So, as I give you my background, I'm a teacher behavior specialist. So, I've been a teacher for about 26 years of my life. 12 years in Detroit. You can see the tattoo on my arm that says Detroit. I love my city, Pistons, Lions. Uh, in 14 years in Houston. So man, I, I've been teaching longer here than I, I was teaching in Detroit, so 
I'm more cemented and I got my feet on the ground more in Houston than I did in Detroit, so this is very important to me. I have a master's degree from the University of Phoenix, leadership and curriculum. Uh, my bachelor's degree is from Concordia University, history and sociology. My minor was PE. I went to college and I played basketball four years, four years of basketball. I started at Dakota State and I ended up at Concordia University where I graduated in 1995. So really, and then after that, I know a lot of y'all like music. I'm a rapper, producer, promoter. I was signed to a record label that's Plateau Records. And if you look me up on YouTube, you'll see me doing shows all over the world as a young man and as an older man. <laughs> the ball didn't stop for me. I'm still moving, I'm still breathing, I'm still living, I still got life. So the things that I like to do as a youth, as we all like to do, I still do as an older man. Let's go to the next slide, please. So this is my mom. This is me growing up in the 1970s. So it's real, okay? So I just wanted to just kind of give you a little background of, of, of me. So that this, these are very important pictures to me. Uh, it's my mother, I got my mother tattooed on my arm. You know, we all choose different tattoos and different things we like, but I appreciate my mother. So I tattooed her on my arm. Let's go to the next slide. Now, my upbringing. I don't want to say you've heard this story before, but my upbringing, so I, my mother was a single mother, and I'm the oldest of six children. There's six of us in my family. Uh, my mom had a job, and she also had welfare to support us. So just working a job wasn't good enough to support us. It, it, it couldn't support us. She had to have welfare for six children. So we had food stamps. Uh, back then, I, would, I think they call them EBT cards. But back then, when I was young, they used to make these things called food stamps, where they would look like actual dollar bills, and be, but they were food stamps that you got from the government because your parents didn't make enough money. So can you imagine, I know a lot of y'all kids, y'all got a lot of pride. Man, I ain't taking that EBT card in the store, or man, I don't. Listen, can you imagine growing up in a grocery store? And you say, yo, I need to get some food, and you break out some food stamps in front of cash. Everybody do right there, you didn't have no money. Yeah, I had to, I had to deal with that. I was, diagnosed, I was diagnosed with asthma at six months old. So at six months old, I, I couldn't, I had issues breathing. I was on all types of machines and going through different things. I mean, I think some of y'all, some of y'all have deal, deal with illnesses. Some of y'all deal with illnesses. You might have relatives who deal with illnesses and different things. But that don't stop the show. We all got things we deal with. Everybody's got somebody in their family or a friend or somebody to know that's suffering. Imagine what the, the parents are going through in reality taxes. Can you imagine? That's horrible, man. You know, and I'm thinking, you got to be too far from music. Some of us act so crazy in our ways, man, that's it, oh, that's kind of close. I'm an educator. I can't imagine some of we, we go through these drills every day, every, every year. You know, the, 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 the alarms to, well, the fires and the intruder alarm. And they face that. And y'all still breathing right here. You young ladies, you young men, you're still breathing. It didn't happen in your school. But we have to think about others. Let's go to the next slide. So, these are my siblings. As you can see, I take a lot of pride in my family. That's me and my sister, my mother. And these are my brothers. So it's five boys and it's one girl. So that's, if you can see, I just wanted you to see the different stages, you know, of life. Because guess what? You haven't even reached a certain, you just, oh, y'all still babies. That's the most beautiful thing in here, is y'all still learning, so you just still growing. 
And I just, always, I think one of the coolest things that my family liked about me now, he was like, man, you always got the video camera and you're always taking pictures and you're always doing that. And now my family is, oh, I'm talking about uncles and aunts, they all calling me for the videos and the pictures and all of that stuff that they used to talk about me back years ago that I was, get up the camera out of my face. Stop taking the pictures. Let's go to the next one. Okay, so I'm at 11 years old. This is a turning point in my life. So I think at 11 years old, you're supposed to be in the sixth grade. Y'all in the sixth grade, right? 11, 12. So yeah, 11, 12 years old. So yeah, so at 11 years old, I was lag, I was dealing with asthma, I was dealing with a lot of, a lot of trauma. And my mom had me tested at Beaumont Hospital in Detroit, Michigan for learning disabilities. The doctor said my learning conditions were so dire that I would not be able to live a normal life. Now, I've got the facts. Don't just take my word for them. I'm not just blowing smoke up your butt. I'm telling you the real deal. Doctor said I, I had conditions that he said, man, the, the, the worst you're gonna be, the best you're gonna be is a, is a supermarket bag, is what they were telling me. Or the, the best you can be is, is uh, doing some job that is not going to give you the career that we all aspire and dream for. I failed the third grade because I had asthma. I was missing a lot of school. Who fails the third grade? I failed the third grade. So I'm a year behind everybody from the third grade moving forward. I know it's funny, right? It is. Listen, I had no gear to make me confident in school. And as I look at it, everybody in here, everybody in here has Nikes. They got on a cool shirt. Even the hairstyle is dope. Nobody uh, has any whack gym shoes on it because I go from road to road. No whack shoes, everybody kind of dresses in their own style, right? But back then, all my clothes, and you guys got Walmart here in Texas, we had Kmart in Detroit. Kmart. Has anybody here heard of Kmart before? Okay. So Kmart was the store that people would shop at to get clothes when they couldn't afford the new gear, like the expensive stuff, like the Nikes. So I had to go to school, right, with no confidence. You know, at least if you're not smart, pay attention, young man. Pay attention. At least if you're not smart, you want to go to school feeling all good, confidence, you got your shoes on, you're looking fly, you can at least play the role. Well, I could I wasn't smart and I didn't have a gift. So from that, I dealt with a lot of bullying from time to time. And I know some of you in here deal with the same thing. But your bullying may come from different circumstances. But I can just tell you, looking back as a grown man right now, I didn't like that. And I'm sure a lot of you don't like that right now. A lot of times I see, come here, man. You, homeboy. That row right there. I see you're going to be a statistic. So we got two statistics. One, two, three. Come here, man. One, go Come here. Come here. Come here. Step up, man. Stay here for a second. What's, what's the problem, man? What's so funny to you? Who, who's in your house that teaches you this? I know your mother doesn't teach you this. I know your mother doesn't teach you this. Because if your mother was anything like my mother, what you doing is disrespectful. My mother would have slapped the shit out of you. And said, don't do that to an adult, whether a grown man or a grown woman is speaking. But I know it's the 2000s, it's the 2020s, and y'all can call the police now. So I don't know if your mother was doing that kind of stuff. But that's rude. That's disrespectful, man. You make your family look bad. I'm looking through you right now. I'm looking through you. I'm looking at who's lazy. You follow me? At six, when we're in the sixth grade, it's kind of hard to talk to you, man. I need to talk to somebody who's holding you in your household. Now, I appreciate you and I love you. For real, just give me 10 more, 10 more, 15 more minutes to get this point out. 
and I'm going to keep it 100 with you. Understand? What's your name, G? Gianna? I'm oh, married. What's your name, G? Dominique, like Dominique Wood for the basketball player. My man, what's your name? My guy, like Alexander. All right, so we're going to keep it moving. I appreciate you guys. Everybody give yourselves a round of applause right now. And the reason why I say this, the reason why I say this is to, to give yourselves a round of applause is not to just try to pump you up, but I'm thanking you. Because everybody in here has been so respectful. Let's go to the next slide, real quick. So, as I was telling you, Beaumont Hospital said that I would not learn. So here it is right now, when my mother got me tested, I think I was in the fifth grade, and I know you can't look with my glasses, I can't see, but it was saying, the doctor said he had neurological problems, he wasn't gonna be able to be, you know what I'm talking about. I changed that. Nobody was gonna make a decision for me on my life. Single mother or not. This is real important to me. I know you can't see the documents, but what my mother sent me, my mother sent me these documents about a year ago. And I was so excited to see these documents because I'm like, damn, am I the guy with the master's degree and the two bachelor's degree and the, the minor in? And they said this about me? Come on. I, I got inspiration, y'all. I got inspired in the sixth grade. You're in the sixth grade right now. I'm gonna keep it 100. I got inspired. I've seen this man over here. His name is Isaiah Thomas. Not the Isaiah Thomas you see right now on TV, but the, I, the real Isaiah Thomas who played for the Pistons, Detroit Pistons. So my uncle used to take me, you know, my uncle used to work with Channel 7. He was a courier. And the courier is the guy who takes the reels from the game because they had the big cameras back then. They didn't have digital or video. So I used to be able to get in all the games. So I got inspiration from Isaiah Thomas. My mother couldn't buy me a lot of, she, my mother bought me what I needed, not what I wanted. But one of the needs I needed was that basketball room. And I remember my mother rented this house in 1981. She said 1980 or 81. And I said, I need a basketball room. I want to be a basketball player. So I got inspired by Isaiah. You guys might find inspiration in different people you follow for the young ladies. I don't know, it's Beyonce or TikToker or I don't know who you be inspired by nowadays. Uh, what, 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 what people inspire you? Singers. So singers, same thing, sports athletes. That's where I got mine. So now I'm moving on. That's my younger brother right there, Brian. And then this is me in my Redford High School uh, uh, basketball jersey. So I worked so hard, guys. So we're going from all the way from 1981 all the way up to 1989. I'm inspired. The same guy they said was going to learn. How many people were here told you that? Boy, you ain't got it. Girl, you ain't got it. You ain't nothing but trouble. You get on, you, all you do is get in trouble every day. How many people tell you that? Raise your hand. Come on, y'all. Keep it. Let's, let's keep it real. Let's keep it real. People, people have told us that in our lives. Do y'all like that? How does it make you feel? It don't make you feel good, does it? That's why. This, that's the word up there. What's that word say, y'all? Let me hear it again. Just say it again one more time for me. Inspiration. Man, you gotta find something that's positive and get inspired. All right, come on, keep moving. And lastly, I told y'all I like music, right? I had my inspiration and it gave me motivation. So this is me like in 1987. I said, I want, I, I, you know, I, I was serious about being a rapper. 1987, I'm 17 years old. I'm serious about being a rapper. And this is me on my young stages to the point where I got to where I needed to be. Let's go to the next one. Y'all keep it moving. This is my family. This is, this is what you, we all have. Some of us, oh, but you of us are blessed to have family. This is what you got to draw your energy from. That's my grandmother and my grandfather. This is my, my mom, my grandmother, my aunt, and my other aunt. I mean, these women, 
I tell you, I didn't have no father raising me. So these women, those are my uncles, those are my mother's brothers. Because my father wasn't in my life. So I got my grandmother and grandfather had 15 kids together. They were married for 63 years. These are all her boys. They had eight boys and seven girls. So this is what these men up here, this is where I get my inspiration from because I kind of wanted to be like every one of them. We got to find somebody who motivates us and gives us inspiration. And that's what I'm, not, that's what I'm saying because family, that's where you draw your, your love from, guys. That's where you draw your empathy from. Your feelings for everybody else. Let's go to the next one real quick. These are my degrees. Remember, I showed you some paperwork that said I was going to be a dummy. I fooled them. Did nobody make a decision for me? I learned, I found a way to learn. I found a way to comprehend. And, our, and, and comprehending is not just reading the words. I think some of y'all know that. Yes, sir? Do statistics get to make their own decisions? No. You make your own decisions. Let's go to the next one real quick. That's me in college, y'all. Four years. You can listen. All you have to do is look up Anthony Singleton on YouTube or Google, and you'll see a million pieces of art from him. That was important to me. This was, this was my highlights, guys. You're still writing your highlights. This is a great thing, guys, because you're writing your highlights right now. This is my music career, y'all. So you see me as a young man, and now you see me as an old man. This picture was taken about two months ago. I was in England, just two months ago. As an educator, we have off days. You know, they give us days off. I do tours around the world. Five types of peer pressures. Things that help us. Things that stress us. Things that we try to be a part of when we ain't making the right decision. Number one, experimenting with drugs and alcohol. I'm going to have to be honest, and I know rappers have said this many times, but when I was coming up as a rapper, rappers were talking about selling the drugs. The rappers nowadays, they're talking about smoking the drugs. I don't get it. I mean, because you're going to kill yourself. Uh, you are. Drug and alcohol abuse is perhaps the most common and feared pressure of all. How many of you have been caught in the bathroom with the vape pens? How many of you smoke weed? How many of you try things that you should try? I mean, I'm just keeping it real. But if you're talking about the drug pressure, in 1986, a Gallup poll asked Americans, which one of the following do you think is the most serious problem for society today? 42% crack, 42% 1986. But I just wanted to, I'm just giving y'all the drugs of what's going on and the evolution of what's going on since I was a youth. Because when I was born, the drug of choice was a hero. Yeah, and then it went on to crack in the 80s. And then cocaine declined in the 1990s because that was really, at the, towards the end of the 90s, you know, everything was crack and cocaine and getting high with that stuff. People were selling their, their houses and their TVs and their clothes and their, everything that they could get their hands on. Now, 1999, cocaine is declined and then you got into this thing called ecstasy and crystal meth. Hey y'all, this is killing people. And, 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 and the crazy thing about it is I just gotta keep it real. You guys are finding this really, really cool. I, don't, I think when I was coming up, drugs were supposed to be uncool. Nancy Reagan said, say no to drugs in the 1980s. And now in the 2022, y'all saying, give me drugs. Give me, give me some sandy bars. Give me, give me uh, some Vicodin. I'm gonna just tell you, y'all, those things are being lynched. And if you want to be a loser, I'm going to just tell you, if you want to lose, go ahead and take the drugs. Go ahead and kill yourself. That's, that's what a loser does. Because that's what will eventually happen if you do that to yourself. Five tips for dealing with peer pressure. 
Join the right crowd. How corny does that sound? Corny. But guess what? It's the realest thing in the world. Join the right crowd. The best way to avoid peer pressure among teens is to have a group of friends that lift you up. Man, I be walking through the hall, man. I'ma keep it real. Now, well, listen, man. I see some of y'all together in the hallway, and some of you honest, man. As a parent, you have five children. That's the worst thing I've ever seen. That's how you guys disrespect each other. You slapping each other in the head. I see boys on top of girls and punching them or, And y'all know what y'all see me, because some of y'all been, you, you had my back before. But just to disrespect, I'm just letting you know, because I'm going to just tell you the first thing. When I see y'all hit on each other and slap each other, I said, damn, is that what they want to do? That's what it shows. I mean, where did you get it from? I'm sorry, I had a single household, so I didn't see nobody bust my mom up. Or my mom punching somebody up. I didn't see that. You shouldn't be touching anybody inappropriately. You're somebody's child. Imagine that. Imagine that. You, you young ladies who leave the house sometimes, your mother's thinking you so, oh my God, it's so ladylike. And she, 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 she mom has no idea. Her daughter is as is wild as a pit bull. The ones who say that, whoop, 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 they're the ones who probably experience the fact the most and doing that kind of stuff the most. It's not cool. I don't care what you are or who you want to be. It's just some things are not tangible. Some things ain't cool. Develop your own moral compass, guys. Listen, be introspective and take the time to develop your own sense of what is right and what's wrong. Do the right damn thing. If old boy want to go do some bull crap, you don't do it. I mean, I understand now in education we separate God and school. But I believe in God. And I'm trying to live a healthy life. And when my time is up on this earth, I, I definitely want to make it to the afterlife. So I got to develop a moral compass about myself and how I'm I mean, you ain't got to be a holy roller. You don't have to be all up in the Bible. You, know? you, you just got to have this moral compass. No, man. Instead of tripping this person, I'm going to help this person up. Instead of talking about what they don't got, why don't I help them? You got to have some balls, man. Now, as we go on, avoid the negative situations. Your friends want to go bust in the car, go smoke more weed in the hall, and you know that's going to be done for trouble. You might get away with it 18 times. But the 19 times, that shit going to catch up with you. And it's going to hurt you. Oh, you, you don't believe me? Let's just watch how it plays out. Let's just watch how it plays out. Might not, might not get it in, in middle school, but I, I, I best Let's be sure that everybody happened to you in high school. We don't want it to. And know who your real friends are and understand the potential consequence of your action. Next real, please. Respect. I had a video, and I'm looking at the time, so I don't think I'm going to play the video right now because we've got to get another class, and I'm a little delayed. But just have a simple respect for somebody. Dude. I mean, you can disrespect, I mean, it's so easy to disrespect somebody. The easiest thing in the world is to be disrespectful and angry. Like, that's some easy stuff. But it's not going to get you far in life, guys. You got to make the right decision. That's all I wanted to talk to you about. Simply making the right decision. Some of you I will not see again. I'm going to be here next year. Some of you will move on to different schools. You might move on to different situations. But it's important for me to tell you, please make the right decision. Please make the right decision. Thank you, guys.